Clearing time is really hard work. You might not get a day off in weeks. When I knew that I needed to build a bulletproof buggy, I knew that I had to call in the experts, Al and Andrew. Al, you got any ideas? Yeah, I got some ideas, I might. Ah! <laughs> ah, my cheeks are hurting. That's about a 14 metre difference. Lock her on. No. Oh, look at that. If you're as good as that in the kitchen, you are marriage material. <laughs> Get back oh. to work. <laughs> With all the work that Terrain Tame is doing, I'm really hoping that this buggy will be as strong as it possibly can. So my new little best mate that travels around with me is Kelpie, and his name's Bungie. Bungie really suits his name. He bounces everywhere. But he comes in the trucks with me a lot and he's really good just sitting there and it's, it's really good company when I'm travelling alone so much. So some of the things that I've found in travelling around is that people have no idea how bad their vehicle is because they get used to the plane and the steering and used to the brake pulling. So what, what I want to do with it, check with this vehicle is, is there any problem that will show up with me driving uh, that we need to fix. Now, the first thing is I notice it's got nearly uh, 85 mil play in the steering. I've checked that the wheels aren't moving when I'm doing that. We've got to get rid of that. You don't want this movement before the wheels actually move. Okay, so the steering's not heavy. It's got some big tires on, so you've got to make uh, allowance for them, but it's got wheel balance problems because the wheel's shaking like this. It needs, uh, it's a bit hard to balance those big fat tires, but we've got a wheel balance problem. I will be changing the tyres anyway. These aren't suited for mustering. But I, I think probably if I was to steer it suddenly, it might be the wrong thing to do. It might actually gradually take off into the bush, and that's not ideal. You'd think I'd be a bit worried with our swerving around the road, but by now I'm quite used to it. If there was a real woof, 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 woof as we go along, we'd either run over a dog or we've got a <laughs> wheel bearing problem. Uh, it's pretty good, but we can get it for miles better. Miles better. Now we're getting stuck into the wheel bearings. Normally we would have done this at the same time as we did the brakes while the hubs were off. For the purposes of testing, sometimes we do things out of sequence. Am I taking this off yep, first? it's all got to come out. Whoa. Okay, so we're just going to punch out the, the uh, outer race of the wheel bearings. So there's a notch each side so you can whack it out evenly. Yep, cool. So this is what they call a tapered roller bearing. Well, this is the outer race of a tapered roller bearing. Alan's just nicked off with the rest of it. This is the inner bearing, so this one sits on there. Yep. So there's a few interesting things you can pick up on with this. See how it's got these parallel lines? Yeah. That's where it's been sitting for a long period of time. Is that where they fuse together? Yes, it will. It will fuse to that. And then what will happen is once this fuses and can't rotate anymore, because this is a very nice tight fit in there, mm. and the other side of the bearing, the internal diameter of the inner race, just slips over. Right. So it's able to spin that once this seizes and then it'll eventually get so hot that it welds itself to the stub axle. There we go. Beautiful. Yes, yeah, so you there? Yeah. Would you like to have a quick look at Uncle Owen over here fiddling around with the bearing? We've had a look at this bearing. That looks good. So I've just washed this out there and uh, I can't see anything on it. And just for fun, I'll grind this open and pull it apart just to make sure. It'll ruin the bearing, but who cares? And I'll put it in the vice and I'll probably wear me blooming glasses because, you know, there's people hanging around. <laughs> well, don't wear them bloody things. For a long way from help, if you hurt yourself. Nothing ever happens to me. Yeah, you don't get to his age without, you know, getting some kind of eccentricities. Someone's got to keep him in line as well. OK, stand back. So we pull that apart and all the rollers fall all out. You wonder how they put it together, that's a cage, just separates the rollers. Um, so sometimes I put a little spike in between the rollers and I turn it and every now and again it'll catch and you think, hello, we've picked up something we wouldn't have picked up otherwise. Just below the surface, pitting, and it would destroy the bearing very quickly. Now these stupid glasses I've got, don't going to exaggerate it like it should do. What's this? It's just to comb your beard. Yeah. <laughs> 
And you've got to be really clean when you put together wheel bearings because if you get the tiniest bit of grit under that, the roller will skid instead of rotate. And as I'm sure you can imagine, the surface area it's actually touching is really narrow and the bearing will get really hot really quickly and seize up. So. All right, end of story. Yeah. That's good. Next step, removing the hub gasket. It's not getting anywhere too quickly. So why do we have to remove this one? Okay, so basically this gasket is what keeps the, the grease and everything in the hub and it keeps the dirt and the water out of the hub. So if we don't change it, we run the risk of it leaking. I feel like this is the job you give to the apprentice. Well, Wait a minute. Yes, it usually is, <laughs> <laughs> now that you mention it. Jess gives the whole assembly a spray with brake cleaner to clean it. If you're in a workshop, you'd use a high pressure cleaner. These are Koyo bearings, they are world class. Fantastic Japanese made bearings. As you can see quite clearly that there is a taper and to insert that bearing, now if you were to put that in upside down, she ain't gonna fit. Installing the bearing has to be done very carefully. If it goes in on an angle, it can get jammed and can also shorten the life of the bearing. And as you get more of the bearing inserted into the housing, you have to be a bit less concerned about alignment because it'll guide itself. Jess has a go at the other hub. It. Cool. Now what we've got here is a new hub. So if the hub is damaged beyond all repair, you can replace it. But there's nothing wrong with yours, so there's no point, no point replacing it. Next is to, we've got to pack the wheel bearings. Obviously it's got to be full of grease, otherwise it's not going to work properly. And the idea is to work it into the bearing. Another thing you can do is if you've got a big pot of grease, you can throw it in there. I've seen it and it just about packs it for yeah, you. Right. You can do it, yeah. Some people will palm it in off the, off the palm of their hand as well. However, I like to cheat. <laughs> Best invention ever. Pack, that's the easy way of doing it. Well, like we were discussing before, this is the new style of seal. This is a, it's got an integrated wear sleeve in it. It's built much like a front rear crank seal is on a lot of diesel engines these days. So it should be a very robust thing. What we've basically done is applied a bit of uh, heavy duty engine technology and applied it to a wheel bearing. So, and of course, if the, if the sealing surface is, has been damaged by you know, dirt under it or anything like that on your stub axle, this will get rid of that because it's got a new sealing surface. The rubber touches it, yep. not the seal itself. So now we've packed a generous amount of grease in there, put the seal in. Coming up on the next episode. We're gonna get stuck into the steering knuckle now. We're gonna go right through all this and replace it all. Is that something I can do? Depends how hard you can hit. <laughs> you wanna find out? <laughs> when working with Al and Andrew, you know you're gonna learn something along the way, even if it's unconventional. Never use your own sockets when you build them on because you'll damage them. Use something else's. You've got a cut? Yeah. You've got band-aids?